What is going on guys? So today we are going to go over some of the most underrated sets in ESO PvP right now. Compared to some of the meta sets like Burning Spell Weave, Clever Alchemist, and Rallying and Cry, these sets aren't necessarily as good, but in certain situations and with off meta builds, I believe these sets are undervalued and don't get the love that they deserve. They are just like a second string quarterback. Nobody knows their name until the first string is hurt. Or in ESO's case, the meta sets are nerfed and you need a backup ready to go. So I think it would be a good idea to at least be aware of these sets and have them in the back of your mind. But before we get started, if you guys are newer to PvP, I created the ESO Academy Discord server. It is designed as a resource to either help you start or improve a PvP in ESO. We have several hundreds of members and we are growing by the day. We would love to have you join. It doesn't matter what your experience level is, we are here to help. If you guys are interested, I'll leave the link down in the description below. And last but not least, as a continuation of my month-long giveaway of a $50 PSN Steam or Xbox gift card, all you have to do to enter is like this video, subscribe, and comment top five in the comment section. I'll announce the winners later this month on my YouTube community post. But with that out of the way, let's get right into it. For the first set, we have Trial by Fire. This gives you a two-piece of maximum health, a three piece of armor, a four piece of healing taken, and the five piece while under the effect of an elemental status effect, you gain 8,500 armor. So the trial by fire set is a craftable set. You need three traits research and access to the Orsinium DLC. So the first question you guys will have is what is an elemental status effect? Well, an elemental status effect is a secondary effect that procs from using a certain damage type. For example, in order to proc the burning status effects, you have to deal flame damage. For lightning, that proxy can cuss status effects, so on and so forth. Now, the real value in this set is for any kind of outnumbered or large encounter, there is almost a guarantee you will pretty much always have an elemental status effect on you, making this one of the strongest defensive sets in the game. But that is not all. To take full advantage of this set, I highly suggest in the red CP tree, only put 10 points in the Mystic Tenacity. This passive in the CP tree reduces the duration of elemental status effects on you by 5% per stage. This allows us to get the highest uptime on status effects on us, but also allows us to use the other CP slotables there as well. To take this even further, there is a red CP slotable called Survival Instincts. This reduces the cost of your core combat abilities like roll dodge, block, break free and sprint by 25% if you have an elemental status effect on you. Just with this set alone and with the CP allocation, you can gain immense damage mitigation with Trial by Fire, but also can gain an enormous amount of stamina sustain in PvP, which is so very vital to your survival. I think this set is underrated and under talked about, which is why it is in this video. But I think this is the single best defensive set in the game. It is better than Pariah, Iron Blood, Trickery, you name it, this set is better. On top of all of that, it is crafted, so it is very easy to obtain for newer players. For the next set, we have Moon Hunter. This provides you a two and a three piece of weapon and spell damage, a four piece of critical chance, and the five piece when your alchemal poison fires increases your weapon and spell damage by 547 for eight seconds. So you can get the Moon Hunter set from Moon Hunter Keep, and it does require the Wolf Hunter DLC. So first, let's go over what alchemal poisons are. So these are poisons that you craft at the alchemy station. They are similar to potions because they are consumables, but they use a poison solvent instead of a water solvent. Also, slotting them on your weapon suppresses the weapon enchant that you do have. So poisons have all different kinds of effects, like dealing poison damage. They can increase the cost of your opponent's skills. Some even snare enemies' movement speed. Others can provide you actually with minor buffs like sorcery or brutality for a short duration. It all just depends on the ingredients that you use. So since the hybridization of gear sets, armor passives, and skills, this set has a lot of potential on any kind of damage over time build. The reason I say that is alchemal poisons have a 20% proc chance off of light attacks, heavy attacks, and weapon abilities meaning class skills have zero influence on the proc chance of poisons, but weapon abilities like in the dual wield, destro, and bow have a 20% chance to proc. Some good skills that you could use is blood craze, deadly cloak, and bloodthirst from the dual wield, which in my opinion would be one of the best weapon setups and skills uh, to use this proc set. But some other skills are force pulse, clench, and blockade from the destro staff. This set can almost have a near 100% uptime because poisons have a 10 second cooldown, while this set has an eight second cooldown. 
So as long as you can stay offensive using several different kind of damage over time weapon abilities, this set will provide some crazy uptime and huge damage. I think this is one of the highest damage sets in the game when you add up the two and the three piece, giving us a total of 805 weapon and spell damage for eight seconds. So another bonus of this set is it provides you with weapon and spell damage, not just damage for your abilities, but actually goes on your character sheet, which not only increases the damage that you deal, but increases your healing potential as well. The downside to this set, however, is a 20% chance to proc poisons is a 20% chance. So it is going to be RNG based. So if you accidentally proc your poison light attack weaving to swap to your back bar, you do get the damage buff and actually healing potential on that bar, but you really lose out on the offensive window that this set can provide. But if you can proc this set in stride doing an offensive combo, you can absolutely melt some health bars. Next, we have Scorion's Fee. So this gives you a two piece of maximum magic, a three piece of magic recovery, a four piece of weapon and spell damage, and the five piece, when you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack, you gain imbued aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three other group members 307 magicka and stamina recovery. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds. If you deal damage with a fully charged heavy attack with an imbued aura active, consume it and gain an overflow aura for 10 seconds, granting you and up to three other group members 307 weapon and spell damage. So you can get the Scorion's Feast set from the Dread Cellar Dungeon, and this does require the Waking Flame DLC. So Scorion's Feast is one of the most underrated healer sets in PvP right now. So with the release of the Rallying Cry set this update, that honestly may be a better option for most situations because of the critical resistance and the damage. However, that set doesn't provide your group with an AoE recovery buff. I think this set could be used in a small group with obviously no more than four players, and that is a perfect spot for this set in Battlegrounds. On a pure healer build, you're typically gonna be doing a lot of resto heavy attacks, keeping your magic up, and also getting the major mending buff. This set would synergize so well, giving your group a nice AoE buff of recovery. But you can also do another heavy attack to give your group a 300 damage bonus as well, providing some nice versatility for not only yourself for the damage buff, but also to your group members as well. If you are in a pinch and taking a lot of damage, that recovery could be very clutch. And when you're ready to go offense, do another heavy attack, and you're ready to go berserk. Overall, in my opinion, this is one of the most underutilized healer sets in PvP that I would personally like to see used a bit more because it is a very good set. For the next set, we have Aurorin's Thunder. This gives you a two piece of maximum health, a three piece of weapon and spell damage, a four piece of offensive penetration, and the five piece dealing direct damage to a target within 10 meters of you summons a cone of lightning from your chest for five seconds, dealing shock damage every one second to enemies in the cone. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. So you can get the Aurorin's Thunder from the depths of Maltar, and this does require the Wrathstone DLC. This set is one of the best proc sets for the Templar class, but can also be used on many different type of melee focus builds. Let me explain. This set has a great 2-3-4 piece, giving us much needed damage, health, and penetration. So this set is ideally used on the front bar as it has an easy proc condition. All you have to do is direct damage in a melee type of range. So you use a light attack and you can proc the set. It has a 50% uptime and has a lot of AOE pressure. While for 1vx situations, it may not be the best because it has a five second uptime, However, in Battlegrounds, the consistency of this set can be absolutely disgusting. The AoE damage this set provides paired with any other type of AoE melee spammable like sweeps or jabs on the Templar could melt some hairlines. Pair this with Power of the Lights or Purifying Light, which will increase the damage absorbed, which adds even more burst potential. Oftentimes, some of the best sets are sets that are synergized so well with the playstyle that you were already using in your build that you don't even have to change anything. So for other classes like DKs, this set could be an option if you don't wanna run the meta burning spell weave and want to be a little bit different. Overall, this is one of the most underrated melee proxies in PVP that doesn't get used enough. And for the last set, we have Crusader. This gives you a two, a three, and a four piece of both weapon and spell damage. And the five piece, when you deal direct damage with a blink, charge, leap, teleport, or pull ability, you consecrate the ground beneath you for 10 seconds and gain a damage shield that absorbs 1595 damage for six seconds. Every two seconds, you and up to 11 group members in that area gain minor courage for 12 seconds. This effect can occur once every 20 seconds and the damage shield scales off the higher of your weapon or spell damage. So Crusader is a base game set that you can get from the Volenfeld dungeon. So Crusader is one of the most unique sets in the entire game as the damage shield of this set scales with the higher of your weapon or spell damage. 
I wonder if this may be an insight to the future of some possible damage shields we could get for the weapon and spell damage stat. If we do, I called it here first. So the Crusader set is used in a very niche kind of playstyle. I've actually used this set on my Stamina Sorcerer using skills like Streak, which is considered a blink ability and it's kind of how we proc the Crusader set. I think this would be used for more of a group support build. Think of like a Negate Stamina Sorcerer with the set providing the group with an AoE Minor Courage buff. So people can use different monster sets other than Magma Incarnate. All while this set provides you, the user, with 602 weapon and spell damage and a nice damage shield to help reduce your damage taken. This set does have a decent cooldown, so try to use this set at the right time for the most benefit. Now, you don't necessarily have to use this on a stamina build. I think you could do some memes on this set with a magic sorcerer just for an extra third damage shield. It may not even be too bad stacking more spell damage rather than max magic, but regardless, shields scale off of maximum magic, so it's kind of hard to do that. But if you wanted to be a little bit different, you can maybe try this set out. I don't think this is going to break the meta anytime soon, but it's a fun and a nice off meta set you can try out. So overall, these aren't the most meta breaking sets in ESO, but I think that they can add more depth to your theory crafting inventory for builds you might make in the future. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.